the uh, chair of the 2024 Annapolis Caribbean Ocean Race. Um, today we have uh, John Schaefer who's going to be talking about data management. He's from the Ministry of Sailing uh, and very excited to have him. Real quick before we get started though, um, the restrooms are across the hall. You're all invited to come upstairs afterwards if you'd like uh, for, for lunch at EYC if that's something you'd like to do. Uh, EYC welcomes you to come up. Um, I think that's pretty much it. We are recording this. Shane Kilberg, thank you Shane, is doing a recording that is going to go onto YouTube and I'm going to do a Zoom recording that uh, is going to go onto the website. So um, anyway, thanks and John, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me everybody. My name is John Schaefer and I'm one of the co-founders of the Ministry of Sailing. Ministry of Sailing has a well, if sailing is a religion, that's about as religious as we get. Uh, but since half of the company, including myself, are former military, and the other half are either British or Australian or New Zealand military, the Ministry of Sailing is kind of like the Ministry of Defense. So I'm the Prime Minister. Um, we started in uh, 2019, 2020 we started, uh, right after, actually almost, almost to the day uh, after COVID shut down, the world that happened right at Heineken Race Week after we finished Heineken, where I was racing on this boat right here and coaching a team which just recently won the Ocean Race. That's right, Wind Whisper. We were coaching that youth since 2018, and it was the youngest team ever to win the Ocean Race. So we're really proud of their accomplishment and building the teamwork together. Our company, we focus on safety. Um, so if you gentlemen and ladies need somebody on your boat at the last minute that drops off for safety at sea, we are flexible. We can do a boat on your boat, safety at sea. We're authorized to do that, Ministry of Sailing. We have the offshore sailing regulation certification for medical. If you need a medical cert, we have that available, which is recognized by both U.S. Sailing and World Sailing. And we have some people that were in our class last week. We have one coming up in April. And a new addition to us is <clears throat> offshore medical support. Say something happens to you while you're offshore, we can get you a direct dial line directly to a doctor. And you won't believe how inexpensive it is. We got a special price for $100 one way to the race. That would work for an individual. So we have that as well. And we, we're working on really starting to put that together for all. My goal is to harness uh, the medical industry when it comes to uh, uh, racing safety. Uh, to provide you one-stop shopping, whether you need medical supplies, medical training, medical offshore support, we can provide that for you. That's what our real goal is uh, with the Ministry of Sailing um, by offshore professionals. So I'm here today to talk to you about some of the things that I do when I'm on a boat, um, usually not in this country, but sometimes here, uh, when we're managing the data coming offshore, whether it's navigation and tactics. So I'm going to tell you what is available, data speeds that are available, what works, what I think is the best. All right, but I'll, I'm also going to give you tips on how to harness that data on different devices. All right, because now it's about not only managing the data, bringing it down, but where you're going to put it, and how you're going to use it, and how it helps you make decisions. Um, if anybody has questions at any time, shoot me. Just raise your hand. I'll handle it just as we go. That'd be great. Because I will talk really fast sometimes. I have a speech impediment because I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, so if I need a translator, uh, I'll need one. And um, uh, anything uh, high frequency or radio, I've got my friend Doug here. Doug's going to answer that because um, I've lost all that knowledge. Uh, Doug Elmore uh, will be able to help you for dealing with HF um, as well. So that's great. Uh, anything else I'm missing? Anyone? Are you going to do a break? Uh, maybe, maybe not. We're going to shoot right through. I don't expect this to be more than two hours. Okay, uh, can we uh, do a little break halfway because I've got some ruffles. Yeah, and so we'll do a break and when I come to a natural okay. stopping point. So I'll go through. Well, let me start with the video. How's that? I'm going to show you how easy it is. Want to start, want to start out with a video to show you how easy some of the stuff is? <clears throat> yeah. um, so first of all, we'll do show and tell. How many people have used the Executive Go? Oh, I'm sorry. How many people have used the Iridium Go, that little hockey puck? What what would you say the fastest download speed you had on that? How long? Any anybody less than ten minutes? <coughs> All right. Less than ten on the on, on the small hockey puck? Yeah. Well, good for you, man. You had a good good stuff. I use I use uh, Cellbox and uh, Xgate. Great, great. So, not bad. so that's not that bad. All right, excellent for you. So this is the new uh, Iridium Executive. 
So our download speeds, which we experience now, are about 90 seconds, and that's all the way into Predict Wind with plotting. So about 90 seconds. So the speed is at absolutely incredible on this. So this is up here. Anybody wants to take a look at it, you're welcome to. Um, we found it very useful, very, very useful, especially because of how fast it was. Uh, and we'll, so we'll talk a little bit about that. But beforehand, I'll just show you a little video on that. I don't sell any of this, by the way, so I'm not promoting anything. I'm just giving you what I think works well. So let me try if I can get this video down. You can see how this works. I don't know if this is going to blast anybody out on volume, so please be patient with me for a second. For Ministry of Sailing with Liam here. Yeah. How are we doing? Liam from Fawcett's Boat Supplies. Now one of the yeah yeah so one of the reasons I have Liam here is Liam has never before ever used an Iridium Go satellite. He's never before downloaded a grip. He's never before used the offshore application for Predict Wind, and he's never before brought that into uh, the grips into Navionics. So we're going to teach him how to do it right here, first time ever. All right, Liam, right here we have the Executive Go. All right. I'd like you to just pick up this antenna and just raise it, just rotate it so it's out. All right. There you go. Just like that? Just like that. That's step one. How hard was that? I think that was pretty difficult. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And as you can see, it says loading here, please wait. So one of the things you're going to do next is you're going to read the top of it when it comes in. And right now, you know, when you're using an executive uh, go, any satellite's got to see the sky. And as you can see here, we can see the sky quite, quite well. All right, now it's loading. Please wait. And it says uh, SOS is not configured. Uh, well, we're going to configure that later. Just go ahead and hit OK on the screen. See that? Read that. Okay. It's OK. There we go. It says swipe up to unlock. So swipe it up to unlock. Pretty easy, right? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Now it's swiped up to unlock. And so now you can see that we have right up in the upper corner, we have full bars for satellite. Got that? Yep. Full bars for satellite. How difficult was that? I'd, I'd say that was, that was pretty easy. Pretty self Explanatory? Taking a walk. Easy to go, go, right? Yep. All right, excellent. Okay, so, all right, so the Iridium Go is sitting right over there, and like we're about 30 feet away. And Liam here is going to use the iPad here to figure out how to do this. Now, one of the things we always recommend is uh, on your page, you have everything all lined up together. So, since we're going to be using the settings, we're going to be using the Executive Pro app, we're going to be using uh, uh, the offshore app, and we're going to also be uh, from, from uh, Predict Wind, and we're also going to be using Navionics here. All right, and of course, it's an iPad, so you just touch the screen. Okay, so the first thing that has to happen, Liam, is you have to connect to the hotspot that's on right there the uh, satellite phone. So, gotcha. so to configure the hotspot, of course, you go to the settings. Yep. All right, go to Wi Fi. Oh, perfect. Now you're going to look for it. This is actually called the Prime Minister. So that is the Prime Minister. So hit, hit the Wi Fi to Prime Minister. There you go. So, and it says you are at the, hooked up to the Prime Minister. There we go. All right, now, now, now Liam, the next step is we want to connect the iPad all right, to the application for the Exec Pro. So you can see the Executive Go right there. Click on that. There we go. It's connected. Just like that. Just like that. Now, we're going to go to the Internet, so select the bottom one there, the Internet. Mm -hmm. All right, and what just says? It says not connected, not right? Connected. Yep. So hit Connect. Oh, oh. Hello, please. And what's it say now? And we're in. It says connected. Okay, now swipe, swipe up. Mm -hmm. Now go to the next one, which is the offshore application. Gotcha. How hard was that? That was by far one of the easiest things I've ever done. Okay, there we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do a, a routing here. All right, so we have a routing here set from Annapolis to uh, Cape Canaveral. All right. All right. So go over here to download and hit download. All right, now over here, do you see where it says download method? Yep. It says web. Mm -hmm. We don't want the web. We don't want We're going to have to change that. All right. Change that to the prime minister, So, which is the Iridium Executive Go. Click that. Yeah. There we go. Go back. It says that. Now go back right down here. It says we exceed the limit. So we're going to turn some things off. So we don't need this one. We don't need the satellite photos. Uh, we don't need ocean data right now. All right, so now to download, it says here's continue to download. Go ahead, hit the continue to download. How's that working? Pretty good, going all smooth. All right, hit download all. Yep. All right, so we're gonna count here, download all. So that's a download all. So far, what do you think? It's, it's very simple, it's easy to understand. 
not not much going on whatsoever. That's awesome. And then there we go. So stop down. So that was about uh, about 90 seconds, probably maybe 100 seconds. Uh, pretty easy so far. Oh yeah. All right. So just click on the close there. Hit the close. Got you. Now go to map. So here's our. our just go to map right there. And look at that. So so all of a sudden, go ahead and zoom in. You can see that's the recommended routing that it's giving you for predict win right there. So you can see all the AIS targets. That's your recommended routing. It looks like um one is two 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 of the models are taking you inside. And the other two are taking you outside the Gulf, which is awesome. There you go. So there's an example of the executive, <clears throat> which um, in using this year has been absolutely fantastic for some of the deliveries I've been doing. So just on that route that you saw, just for an example, once you have your polar, so, so this is marrying up um, the offshore application for predict wind with the satellite. Why offshore as opposed to the regular one? The offshore is a smaller data package. Uh, if you run the regular one, it could still do it, but that's a much bigger data package. And you pay in the long run in time and you pay in price. So those are the differences in that. So as we, as, as we develop this, I'll just give you an example. That route was in there from memory that we did before. We did a, a, a Sense 50, um, uh, which is a Beneteau Sense 50 from Annapolis to Cape Canaveral uh, with the polar set up in the vessel uh, four days and four hours, uh, which was nice. We jived at the end of the bay and we jived at Charleston. Uh, so <laughs> picking the weather window is how you do it <laughs> in something like that. So that's, that's what you're looking at um, when it comes to usefulness of, of a satellite phone like that. So let's go into the presentation. Ah, uh, so this is who I are. You saw that. That's who we are. So this is what we're going to be talking about today, uh, and just the different types of satellite networks that are out there. So this is what's in the sky coming down to communicate for, to you. You have Iridium. <clears throat> now, Iridium had problems early off in, in the early 1990s, but then we had a war, and then the U.S. government bought them out because uh, they were so relying on it. So they're on their own again. Um, and working well. You have Inmarsat, you have the KVH system, you have Intelsat, uh, which is also VSATs. You have the ACR uh, links out there, which are lower orbital satellites, and then you also have Starlink. So pretty much that's what you're looking at right now for the availability of, of satellite communications. Uh, <clears throat> Iridium does have two networks out there now, all right? The difference between, um, which we'll get into later, the difference between the regular Iridium Go, and the difference between the Go Exec is the Go Exec is hitting multiple satellites, where the Iridium Go and some of these are only hitting one satellite. And that might make a difference in not only dat data download, but it's also going to make a difference in maybe your point of sale. And we're going to get into that as well. Uh, <clears throat> All right, there, there, there's pros and cons. We'll get into that, but uh, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty much our organization, uh, which is um, uh, the satellite phone company who we deal with exclusively, which is nice because they give you discounts. And by the way, you'll all get discounts if you call them if you have any data like satellite needs. Just tell them you're with the Ministry of Sailing, and they'll hook you guys up. Um, they'll probably hook you up. Is going to be like they'll probably waive setup fees and stuff like that, which, which are important. So here, here, here's some tech updates <clears throat> um, that you're going to be looking at this year. Now, here's my caveat. Uh, satellite communications hasn't changed that much since the 90s. My first satellite uh, communication started in the 1990s in a box that was this big with a tinfoil -like communicator thing that nobody knew how to use. <clears throat> It was interesting, um, but it worked. <clears throat> All right. Since the 90s up until a few years ago, there haven't been a lot of changes, only the size of your communicators changed. <clears throat> but now, over the last few years, we've had some massive changes come quickly, not only in the types of communications, but there's new networks out there, and the speed is definitely different as well. So you have your, you, you know, you got your towels here. The towels is Iridium Certus, which is new. Um, the, the new Iridium Certus system has multiple satellites that are out there. You might have 15 to 30 satellites you'd be communicating at one time. Something which is new that Iridium has also brought into the network is press to click in their handhelds. So they've taken satellite communications now, and you literally could press and talk like a two-way communicator. 
So if you were on your boat and you had somebody in the kitchen at home, you'd have, as long as they had the antenna seen to the sky, you could press to click a talk now, which is really interesting. It's a really neat feature. It's like the dig, it's like DSC, it's like digital select calling for satellite phones, which is really nice about that. Um, we have a, again, we have the X gate, we have the Iridium Go, things like that. We're going to be talking about the pros and cons, and then we just have a screenshot of what's going on there. And then we have the Starlink. Um, there is a special. I want to let you know that started I think yesterday on Starlink. 30 days, no risk. If you don't like it, you can send it back. So, so that, that <laughs> I don't know if that's going to go all the way to the race, but something I would consider is, hey, <laughs> do the race and come back and send it back. I'm not telling you to do that, but <laughs> I would try it. <laughs> uh, you, you, you know, that's what we would try. So, so that's what you're looking at. And we've got some prices here and what, what they would be. Um, so these are some of the th tools that you're doing, but again, this is only downloading data. It's not really how to use it yet. So um, <clears throat> one of the boats you're going to see here is my old boat, which uh, um, uh, we, we, I, I'll show you what I had on that, which worked out really nice. So what's nice about the track phone, now you're going to see more of these on some of the older Volvo Ocean Race boats. They have the big domes on there, multiple big ones and little ones. Now, they have a, a lot of redundancy built in those. You'll see some of the larger mega yachts with the large domes on there. That's kind of old school now. As a matter of fact, I can tell you that a lot of those organizations have taken out their satellite communicators and they have, guess what, it's inside <laughs> Starlink now. So they have, still have the big dome because it looks cool. Because, you know, when you have a lot of money, the bigger looks better. So they don't like the smart, you know, if you can't see Starlink, they don't like that. Um, at least that's been my experience in some books. Um, so, so... This is great. I mean, your speeds are f fantastic on uh, dealing with that, but it's, that's really unfeasible for the boats that you're dealing with. They're just so large, all right? There's a huge weight consideration that you're dealing with. But for years and years, this has been the most effective, and it also comes with a data link down here, so you can run with the track phone. You can run Wi-Fi systems in your boat. So you, could, you don't have to plug in direct to your computer, all right, which is kind of older school. Now there's a Wi-Fi running throughout your entire boat. You connect that way. Now here's the C700. Now this is a smaller unit. I would say it's about as big as a basketball. All right. This, if you're going to be going with an Iridium, you would have on a post on the back of your boat or maybe up on a spreader. Probably not a spreader if you're racing, but if you're cruising in a big boat, that's a possibility. Um, if you had this on a post at the stern of your vessel, that's probably what you would be using. This is absolutely fantastic. These are gimbaled inside, so they're always going to link on. This has multiple satellites you could be talking to. All right. And so it's got a lot of switching capabilities and a lot of intel built into the switching capabilities. So it'll always be selecting the satellites of which are having the best signal. So that happens automatically. All right, so the single channel switching, and it just hops right back and forth between the ones that are getting the best data once you'll be able to download. So the, I think two years ago is the first time we, we tried the Iridium Certus during the Transpac race. And this is at the time when they weren't providing the Starlink uh, on vessels. It was only campers, all right? So although some boats did have that Starlink, they still worked great, but they didn't have the marine version then. Um, this worked out really good by some of the better navigators that were out there in the world. They would swear by it. They would swear by this because it works so well. Um, I think everybody's switching out now. I want you to be aware of your sails when it comes to communications. So you can see there's the Certus there on, on that vessel there. <clears throat> so um, if you have carbon fiber sails, um, your satellite signal will not go through the carbon fiber sail. All right. So um, there have been instances in ocean races when there was only single channels to one satellite where jives or tacks may take place for them to download their, download their weather grips. All right. So in a competitive race, in a shorter race like the 600, that could be that could be uh, a game changer for you. Uh, in a longer race, race, it may or may not. So what you have here is the satellite connection doesn't bounce through if you see the carbon fiber sails. All right. So that's something to take in consideration, and that's why, depending on the boat that you have and depending on your budget, I would recommend different things based upon the configuration of your vessel. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, what else can I show you about this one? As you can see, um, an installation of a post, uh, from my experience, a post installation should be around $2,000. It's 
So probably a twelve hundred for the post and eight hundred for the installation, depending on the configuration of your boat. Um, so that's what we'd be looking at. That uh, that's if you go with stainless steel. Probably a little bit more if you're going to be doing a customized carbon fiber. Uh, uh, but I don't know how many people be doing that. But I highly recommend it if it's weight. So the Inmarsat sat phone. <clears throat> One of the advantages about the sat phone too for Inmarsat is no matter where you go in the world, that's going to work. Um, I'm not going to tell you to take it everywhere in the world. I would say wherever you do go, if you take that anywhere in the world, is to make sure you can bring it into the countries that you might go to, that some countries have limitations of what you can bring in. Um, the best way to find that out is usually on the internet, not the hard way like I did once. Um, but if you do want a cultural experience in any of the countries you go to, prison's a great way to get one. Um, <clears throat> This is great because it really is useful. Uh, you can put it in your pocket and it's great. Uh, uh, it does have internet download capabilities, all right? but there's one of the weaknesses that you have in some of these is you don't have an ISP directly to your unit, so you have to go through a second provider of ISPs. So that's one of the weaknesses you'll see, we'll get into that later. Um, this also works very good with the red port, and I'll show you what that is coming up next. Any questions going on? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? No. So with this phone, you still need the antenna? Or is this yeah, this has the antenna. You don't need no, the antenna. It has, it has a so internal it, antenna. Every single one of the devices okay. I'm showing you does have an option for an internal antenna or an external antenna. That's okay. exactly right. Um, I have found that uh, this works very well on the cabin top. It's got rubber feet on it. Um, okay. Depending on what your cabin top was, we really enjoyed using this this, this past year or this past uh, fall. Um, and it's actually been affordable as well. Yeah. And, and that has like a rechargeable battery in it. Yeah, this right? ha all, yeah, it has a rechargeable battery in it. Uh, the battery life on this has been fantastic. I think under a four day trip, I never recharged it. And I was downloading twice a day. And then for the last two days, I didn't need to. Uh, in all reality. Um, yeah, it comes in the box with all. all you know, utilitarity. Now, the prices on this are also dropping. So, you can usually buy new, you can get used, you can rent. I think your rental price is about half the price of once if you're going to do the race twice, <laughs> just buy one. Uh, but understand that the capabilities of this change. Also understand if you don't use these, uh, the Inmarsats, or the handhelds, if you don't use them often enough, sometimes you have to cycle through um, the firmware changes. So you can't just go from 1 to 19. You have to go update one, update the other, update the other. And if you don't keep up with your firmware changes, because the firmware changes do take a long time, it might impact you. So one of the hints, and I think I wrote it down later, but one of the hints I want to give you is on all of your data devices that you're using, turn off your updates automatically. Turn them all off. While you're offshore. While you're offshore, turn them off. I've been in a race before using, what app were we using? Oh, it was a Hamilton Island race. In the midst of the race, all the navigator guys lost all of our navigation because everything went to firmware at the same time. Everything. That was a good lessons learned. I was like, oh yeah, go that way, I guess. Um, yeah, so so that, that's a lessons learned. Learn, learn from us. Don't make the mistakes twice. All right. So turn off your updates when you're offshore. Uh, that's the last thing you want to have is all of a sudden you're downloading and then your computer goes through a firmware update. Now, one of the things that happens with our next slide here is an optimizer. So we're sporting this one. This this goes with any of the devices that you, you we're selling or any of the devices that you buy. You can always get an optimizer. All right. Let me be clear. I'm not selling anything. All right. Uh, except the ministry. Uh, anyway, so what the optimizer does is it helps you select the data that you want to download. That's, I think, really, really important. So if you only want to download uh, your, your, your expedition from offshore or any of your grips, you can only select those packets. So those are the only packets they'll bring down. Where normally when you hook your computer up, it's going to download whatever else you have on in the background, whether they're updates or things like that. So it's really important to utilize this because it really helps you deal with that. The other thing this does is it optimizes your usage. When I say optimizes your usage, anybody on your boat that has a Wi-Fi capability, that sends a Wi-Fi signal through your boat. 
So you don't have to directly hard connect onto the satellite device. As long as you have the right apps installed, and sometimes you don't even need the apps, you can just utilize the high, high dollar. You know, I say high dollar, it's a lot of that of the usage. Um, you have the ability to turn on or turn that off uh, based on the people on your boat. <laughs> so if you've got 17 people trying to text home at once, you know, you might run into a data configuration or run out of all, or make it really expensive for your boat. So, so boat discipline is going to be really important when you're using th these things when everybody has access to the Wi-Fi. Uh, a safety tip. So one of the safety tips I want to give you here is in the lessons learned from uh, to have. So when it comes into your crisis management response, when it comes to your preparation, when it comes to your safety training, it's going to be important for you guys to have a list of what these things are. It's also sobering when you tell them why and it makes them pay attention to your safety rules too. <coughs> Any questions on, on the red port? There is another antenna this comes with, which I also recommend. Uh, you can get it in the United States. It's a five amp. It's a five amp Wi-Fi, which you can pull in from uh, Wi-Fi from sometimes five miles apart. I lived uh, once about a mile and a half away from Harrington Harbor South, and my boat was at Harrington Harbor, and I was able to use my house Wi-Fi. So it was a straight shot right over the water. Uh, so there is another antenna that this comes from for for cheating Wi-Fi. I, I highly recommend it. And so here's the Iridium Go. This is just a smaller version. I would call it a hockey puck. Um, the advantage is it's small. Another advantage is it does fit into a, uh, into a Go pack if you have a Go pack. Um, it does link uh, to your phone, but that's the only way you can talk. You can't, you can't talk over this if you need to. You can send text, but you can't talk over this. You do have the ability to use this as a speakerphone as well, so this does have the ability to communicate through this with a conference table top if needed to, and a speakerphone. But that also connects to your phone and you use your phone through that. So Roger okay. that. That's exactly right. Yeah, that connects to your phone. With, yep. And, you know, our predict wind downloads are about 15 to 25 minutes. We do have a special on our website, though, by the way. If you've never had predict wind before, 20% off if you go through Ministry of Sailing. So your first time ever would be that way, and it's on our, it's one of our pages. That's it. that, and I will be for all transparency. We are an affiliate with 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 with, uh, with them. Uh, also has SOS, uh, but it has to be programmed. So automatically, the SOS buttons do not work. Um, if you do have the uh, um, the iridiums, and if you do have the KVHs, it's pound five hundred five. I don't know if you're aware of that. Pound five hundred five. Five hundred five looks like SOS. It goes immediately to the maritime rescue centers. As always, read the distractions. I mean, read the instructions, I'm sorry. If you, if you read the instructions, it tells you how to do that. A lot of people, I'm one of those, being from Wisconsin, have trouble reading. Um, I took an exam once with a crayon. Uh, it worked. Uh, so I always blow through all of the instructions and try to figure it out myself. Uh, but now I've learned I'm um, older to read the instructions because there's a lot of good information, like how to set up the SOSs on each one of these. So we're looking at the pricing here. So these are the ir iridiums, what you're looking at. So the complete C700 Marine, oh, that could be expensive. All right, but it depends on your usage. If you're only on a one-time use, I wouldn't recommend this. But if you're going to be going offshore, this would be great. The 6100, you can see is just a little less expensive, but look at your download speeds are absolutely fantastic. So you got 700 to 350 download speeds. That's very, very close uh, to, to uh, Starlink. It's unfortunate, but Iridium calls theirs Skylink. So if I get redundant, or somebody please correct me if I say it wrong. Yes, sir? Isn't Starlink like... 300 megabit, so like a thousand times faster than that? Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I have that up here too, so okay. it's close. -ist. But even this is pretty fast. Unless you're broadcasting live on YouTube. And, and, and then the other one, which you saw on the boat, I, 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 I mentioned before, like this right here. So that that right there is the, uh, the, the 4100. That's the 4100. These are the big old ones. These are all being replaced now that you'll see uh, by the Starlink. 
And you don't see, you're, you're on, on racing boats, and you're not seeing these anymore. And I think I have some photos to show you some ideas on the Starling. Any questions on that? And then I showed you this. Now, this has some really great advantages as well. Um, I think almost every single one I've showed you so far does not have its own ISP, meaning you have to go through a third party to get your emails, which is another fee. Xgate, things like that. Um, as opposed to, uh, what am I looking for? Oh, as, as opposed to what if, uh, this, which does have its own ISP, so I can download my Gmail, no problem. All right, as you can see, you can, you can, you can uh, do chat apps, Telegram, Signal, Viber, WhatsApp. Really small packages are great for communicating down home with your crew, so if this is on, you do have the ability to send loved ones a WhatsApp group, which is really nice. I could tell you that every, I would say most of the ocean racers um, that are out in the water today uh, do have WhatsApp groups set up with their tech teams. Uh, almost every single one of them have their tech teams have full access now. It's been great to see how Starlink has been supporting so much ocean racing these days. As a matter of fact, I think every, everybody in the, in the solo has Skylink, the ocean solo race, oh, Ronnie Simpson, oh, they, they, oh, Starlink. They all have Starlink and they have WhatsApp group set up. Almost every one of them given by, by Starlink. So that's been awesome to see them support. Um, they also support, <laughs> like you need to pay gas, Venmo, <laughs> Uh, Zell. So, so what's really neat is you're starting to see third-party applications that are built into the usage of these things immediately. And I think that's great from a safety standpoint uh, when you're considering what to, to deal with. I think safety's got to be part of your decision-making on what you're going to, uh, to utilize. And of course, Outlook. Outlook is great to be operating with this as well. I'm turning it on. <laughs> uh, next slide. Okay, Starlink. I already said that there's a 30-day offer today. <laughs> Try Starlink. Uh, I think it started yesterday. Starlink comes out. This is what you're looking at. $250 a month, and that's unlimited, with an you know additional $2,500 of. Thank you. With an extra 2,500 initial outlay, which is absolutely fantastic. I mean, that's that's the opening, right? So that's what it's looking. And then you're looking at, you know, 10 to 10 to 20 seconds on predict wind downloading. That's on regular predict wind. That's not even an offshore. That's that's what our experience has been right now, uh, uh, utilizing the Starlink. It is, I think, a game changer for ocean racing. I think it's a game changer for YouTube channels <laughs> specifically. I got so many YouTube channels that are. Are, are producing their own stuff in the middle of the ocean. And they, a lot of them are even saying they have faster speeds than they do in any Wi-Fi home network. And so they've been really impressed by, by what Starlink has been able to do. Uh, also be aware that it may require uh, custom insulation. Uh, this is off of the Sydney Hobart race this year. This is a Sparkman and Stevens. And you can see the customizations that they have here now with the Starlink that's on there. We've got some smart people here. We're going to talk about pros and cons, but before we do, what do you think? Pros and cons. What are the pros you think of, of, of the Smartlink? Or of, of, of Starlink? What's Starlink pros? Data, right? Anyone else? Latency. Latency, uh, yeah. The signal. The up and down really fast. Absolutely right. Anyone else? Anyone? I'll tell you a con. Doesn't fit in a go bag. It uses a lot of power too. Yeah, power. So power management cons doesn't fit in your in, in, in your to go bag, right? Uh, doesn't transport well for me when I'm doing you know ocean deliveries on racer boats and stuff like that. It's going to be tough sometimes to to carry that through an airport. I can do it, but I don't like doing it. I hate checking in bags. Um, yeah, so so you can see, and I think the rest of them have that. This is also a Glomax. You can see. So they also have a backup in there. So this boat also has a backup system in case they do have it. So I can tell that Glomax there is what uh, another uh, satellite antenna would look like uh, for the Iridium Go <coughs> and the Executive Go and also the handhelds. What else do I see here? 
Uh, VHF. There's that. That, that. That's a cell phone um, repeater. Yeah, I think that is. Yeah. So you can see you see the array that's set up here. These are all carbon fiber. Not that you need one on a Sparkwin and Stevens, but I guess the light is good. All right, so this is what you'd be looking like on data. Uh, the devices, if we break them down. And what I've done is I've placed the green here, the ones that would have multiple satellites, as opposed to ones that are only talking to one satellite. And you can see what your speeds for just a regular download grip could be like on average. So when, you, when you're downloading grips, how many days, hours of data are you specifying in this? All right, so that, that's your use with Expedition. So, so it depends on how you're doing it. So on Expedition, if I'm doing the race, I'm going to be looking at four to five days. Seven days is only going to give me one, one or two uh, different models. So if you're, if you're utilizing Expedition, yeah, that, those are things that you would tick in your setup. Uh, when it comes into your download, so you would tick all the boxes of what you wanted on your expedition to do that. Does uh, using expedition for the routing do any better than just trusting predict wins routing? Um, so, so it doesn't make a difference because what you can do is what the data when you download with the predict win, you can take that data and then you can import those routes directly into and that data directly into uh, expedition. So expedition does have the ability to import that in. So expedition is not gonna use its brain to make different routes it kind of no they can do it it can do that too but you can suck that data in and share that so you can you can download from expedition too no problem so especially when you're hooked up to the wi-fi so expedition does who that so, so you could go directly through expedition hit your download button through your app and it will all automatically do that have you ever found that those routes from expedition are better than predict wind or are they pretty similar well for me i've only found myself on one route at a time so so <laughs> so it's kind of hard what i and I, I think at certain levels it becomes more on understanding your polars uh, to keep up with the weather is to see what they are. Like for instance, that last trip that we, our polars were so dialed in, we could see, uh, we could see where we were for the, for the, uh, at, compared to the positions that we were predicted to be at, and our dots were right on. Our location to the time were right on. And so understanding how to set the polars, does everybody know what I say by polars? Anybody who does not, it's okay to say you don't understand. Okay, so there's a, a certain rating you can get um, when you start racing uh, for your sails. It'll tell you what your optimal speed is per, per wind angle. All right, and so once you plug that in to that optimal speed, you're going to have the ability to say, all right, I'm going to do 180 miles of this day based upon the wind speed, as opposed to setting your polish to doing 90 miles, and that now all of a sudden you might be out of a weather system. So you're plugging in the speeds of your boat per weather angle or per wind angle, all right, and, and optimization of your boat's capacity into the program, and that can predict where you're going to be down the line. Um, uh, they usually come with an ORC cert, uh, so the, ask your sailmaker what they are. Uh, depending on your boat, you could probably also find them online. I've been very successful in finding almost any other boat I've been coaching or training on to find their polars are coming close. Okay, but polars will change depending on the sails, correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so if you have uh, uh, sails, would you expect to, if you have a sailmaker make you a sail, you would expect to get the polars from that sailmaker? Yeah, I would, I, I would think that would work well, but also remember that now if you're, using also, uh, if you're using Expedition, there is a learning capability with Expedition that helps learn what that is. So okay. I can set, I can set, like I'll talk about an app here, I'll talk, I'll talk about an application later that I have on here. Um, iRegatta, which is absolutely fantastic. Another, I think it's a 30 bucks a month, but iRegatta on here. And the reason I have this Velcro on is because I could put what percentage of polars I am because I put my polars in here. And so my team can see the percentage of polars. On some of the masts and some of the pro boats, like even here, you can see what your percentage of polars would be. So they know if they're at 90% polars, they know if they're 100% polars, which we always go for if they're right, uh, or at 110. Um, yeah, you can you can sail. I hope everybody knows that boat speed is theoretical. By now, you know that. <laughs> Hull speed is theoretical as well. I hope hope you know that. Uh, your boat can go faster than the hull speed as recommended, depending on different conditions. Um, although it might be only a couple percentages. 
just for an example, on a flat on a flat day, um, and with a boat full of professional racers, as Doug knows, I cheat. Um, I had a Catalina 445 doing 13 knots down the bay, and that, that's almost impossible. All right, the wind angle was uh, 120, so that's our death zone, um, and we had an A2 up, which we probably shouldn't, in t uh, 27 knots of wind, but we were descending it. Um, it, it, was, it was great. Uh, uh, we still saw J-boats 90, 90 miles down the boat bay, and that, that should never happen. Uh, so, so having the right crew, knowing how to put a boat together, you can really, really enhance a boat. Everybody was sitting in the back of the boat, <laughs> uh, and we cheated. <laughs> we took all the water out. Um, I can say that now, right? <laughs> we didn't win. <laughs> all right, so on this you're seeing, uh, what do I have here? Um, Iridium Go, Inmarsat, uh, the Iridium 9595, which is a handheld like I, I showed you, and the KVH. Why am I showing you the 9595? Because that's the one that works best with downloading data, data in a handset. Um, and then this is what your voice communications is like, and then the Starlink. Anybody here? Nobody has carbon fiber voice, do they? 100% carbon fiber. Okay, they're louder. If you haven't ever been on a carbon fiber boat, it's a great experience. I don't care what type of system you're using, you're not going to be able to control your environment and the noise around your environment. So I highly recommend getting a pair of these for your satellite phone if you're going to be talking. It's going to make your speaking a lot easier. It could take out the wind, it could take out the noises, and you can actually hear. If you don't have one of these, it's going to be very difficult, no matter what you're dealing with here, to talk and understand because there's a lot of environmental factors on your boat that you cannot control. This actually puts some control in there. So finding a cheap or expensive or steal it from your kid doesn't make any difference in, in practice. The other thing is I want to actually insert here is it would be best if you didn't learn this the day before you race. I know you have a lot of things, and I know it's a race just to get to this race, but your preparation and the safety is going to be, uh, your safety due diligence should also incorporate how you communicate and, and, and understanding how to communicate. And I also think it just, it's not just be one person should know it. I, I, I think at least 50% of your team should know these devices to use. Because I think last year we've had instant, I think the last race, there were some, I'll tell you this much, I know one boat that did the Annapolis to Newport last year, seasoned racers, people have won the race before, everybody last year was seasick. Every single person on the boat was seasick. And their ability to keep driving on was great, but some people weren't very useful in that time. All right, so having redundancy in your communication structures and systems can be very important. And what I have found is when I'm teaching somebody and they're asking questions, I start learning again, or I'm starting, they're asking questions which I don't know. And, you know, that, that's awesome as well. But never say you don't know, say you'll find out. <laughs> it's a good thing of leadership I learned. <laughs> uh, what else on this? Again, uh, I want to highlight everything in green speaks to multiple satellites. If you're in a, so if you're only talking to one satellite in a C state and it's not on a gimbal, uh, you could get disruptions in, in downloads, especially if the C state's erratic or your position's changing. All right, so, so that can change uh, uh, very easily. It's easier if you have an external antenna, but if you don't have an external antenna, you would probably find some disruptions. So my competitors should just take their sails down let their boat relax a minute, do their download, and then that's they a, put their sails down. That, that's, that's great <laughs> advice there. Take your sails down, get your downloads, put them up. <laughs> Alright, this is pros and cons. Some of the things we talked about. This is just, this is just uh, I want you to put your safety hat on. I'm supposed to re be reminded of of oh, the offshore sailing regulations. Yes. Thank you. That's a really good question. <laughs> so, what's a go bag consist of? Uh, I'm not going to give you my opinion. What I am going to tell you is that um, last month, World Sailing's OSRs, the offshore sailing regulations, changed for 2425. Um, if you go to the World Sailing website and just search OSRs, the offshore sailing regulations, 
I highly recommend that you download the offshore sailing regulations and it's in a list. And it's going to tell you what the requirements are based upon what type of race it is um, uh, uh, for what a go bag would look like. It gives you the requirements of what they would say for offshore racing your, your, your PFD should look like or your life vest, what those would look like. All right. So when it comes to understanding what's in a go bag, I point to the offshore sailing regulations as the standard. All right. And in those standards, your go bag would have a satellite phone. One of the problems that you have in your communication device is you can't peel some of these off <laughs> and take them with you. So if you do decide to go with something which is fixed, all right, there's nothing wrong with that. But try to build some redundancy in with maybe another device or another type of communicator. Now, whether that communicator would be, um, what were you supposed to ask me? Oh, an iPhone. The latest iPhones do have the ability to talk to satellites now. All right, but those are text. You're not going to be able to talk. All right, but it's not going to work if you don't know how to use it. Again, read the manuals and get used to how to use those. Those are going to be very, very important. Talk to your service providers. Talk to the, go into your Apple phone company and talk to them on how to use those. Yes, sir. iPhone, if you're in C state though, like would be troublesome because like. With that, it's it's first gen still, so like yeah. you've got to be still. You've got to have yeah. a fixed view of a point on the horizon. Yeah. Like it's I totally it's a great idea. It's just I wouldn't rely on it. I, I totally understand that, and there are pros and cons and weaknesses to other things. But I can tell you that the rescue that happened when the boat the X2 lost its keel in Australia in a training race. Um, they were able to f send out a, a signal because nothing else worked. They couldn't get the e perb out. It was under the boat. They couldn't get the PLBs out. It was under the boat. But the iPhone watch worked, and that's how were they able to send help is through the wow. uh, iPhone watch. Mm -hmm. That's a great story. You can download the story. That story is out now, and that's on the Australian sailing. And probably also on Apple's website. <laughs> oh, oh, is it on Apple's website now too? Oh, it was Nexus. The boat was Nexus. Is it Nexus? Yeah, I think Nexus. Nexus 2? Nexus B? Something like that. Maybe it's, I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, so, so there you go, but, but, you know, the point here is understanding what the pros and cons are when you make your decisions on how to get this data down. I would, I would highly recommend redundant. So, uh, again, you can see a, a, another iteration here of a, uh, Starlink. So I would tell you that if you're using for this race, predict wind offshore, this is how much data I would expect you to probably use. This is based on seven days. I would expect you to probably use on the offshore. If you just did that alone, two to three times a day, that's how much data you'd probably pull down in one week. So that's for your pricing. Uh, reason being is because you might want to buy the sat phone and only get one month of data to pay for the unlimited data. That's what you'd be looking at. Probably like that. Those, I think that's part of the decision making of, of what you purchase is the cost effectiveness and the price. Does anybody have any other experiences they want to share about data downloads and, and the price the next week? <laughs> I'll say one thing because I just spent a lot of time reading about it. Uh, I feel like a lot of people will probably end up in life going to the Starlink soon, soon enough. Maybe, maybe not. But you got to be really careful with the. Uh, the package, the data package that you guys, the subscription that you sign up for. Um, they're, they're starting to get very um, specific with which uh, subscription you get. Like, So there's like an RV package, then there's an RV mobile package, which allows your device to be moving, which that sounds great for sailing, but they do have this thing in their terms now, which if you're going over 10 miles per hour, um, they, they can shut you down. So for this is like a difference of like a two fifty or a three hundred dollar package. Yeah. And then if you do the R V mobile plus, you're not limited to the speed restriction. So I mean the majority of those probably don't sail over ten miles an hour, but why take that chance? My recommendation is if, Yeah, so my recommendation is if you do go with Starlink. There's nothing wrong with that. Good for you. Um, but get the marine package. <laughs> And get the and and then usually what's going to be happening, no matter what service that you decide you're going to go with, they're going to ask you questions like, "Where are you using this? 
I wouldn't buy anything online without talking to a service representative. I know too many people that bought the cheapest package and they put it in their phone and they're getting ready to go or they put it in their device. But it was an unlimited data package for like $130, you know, for three months. For Alaska. <laughs> All right, so, 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 so make sure you understand what chip and what program you have because it's going to be dialed in to that specific location that you say you're going. All right, because I mean, think about it. If you're the one selling data, of course, if you want global, it's going to be one price. If you want specific, you're going to do that, right? I mean, think, think about the guys that are selling this stuff, right? Somebody's got to make money. Oh well, yeah, they're not, right? Sorry, they're all making money. All right, so, so, so understand that when you're talking that you're very specific about where you're going to be and how you're going to be using it. Um, and don't think you're going to say, by the way, oh, I'm going to be just using it in my backyard uh, because they'll know exactly on how that signal hits the satellites <laughs> where you are. Um, quick story, I was in a country once where you weren't supposed to have satellite phones and it worked for about a day and a half. The country called up the service provider and said, turn that satellite phone off. That's right, they could tell when you're using one. The country could say, satellite phones aren't allowed in this country, so therefore they call the provider and say, turn it off, and that's what they'll do. So they know exactly where you're at. Any other questions? Unless you're crashed in an emergency, then nobody knows where you're at, right? I just want to lesson. <laughs> expedition, if you're practicing expedition downloads at home, and you're using your Wi-Fi, you're pulling in, you know, from different sources, uh, be advised it may not work the same on, on your radio. Yep. And so get to the boat days in advance, or, or get them to loan you the radio, so that you can ensure that all your data downloads and expedition are working the same as they do. Yeah, absolutely. Practice the way you're going to play is what we call it. So practice the exact same way you're going to play. Uh, if, if you're not doing training uh, 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 in the same conditions that you're going to be sailing, then, then you're not doing yourself nor your team a favor. All right, saying, well, work like this at home, uh, uh, it's probably going to be a learning uh, lesson later in life or later that day. All right, now let's take a break. Want to take a break? Any questions before we take a break? All right, let's take a break. It's a good place to take a break. She is a rear commodore for um, the Eastport Yacht Club. So if you have any questions about EYC, about membership, about anything we do at EYC, Jennifer's here. So she knows everything. Oh, um, <laughs> lots to work. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, before we continue that we've got a couple more seminars coming up in March. Uh, they are on our website. We've got a um, North Sales Racing um, Tactics. Uh, and actually North Sales is is picking up the advertisement for that. So they're, it's a, they're advertising it nationally. So never know. If you're going to come, you definitely need to RSVP because it will get filled and we have a capacity for only 60 at that. So um, they'll probably be either live streaming it or recording it, but, uh, and this is being uh, recorded. Uh, so uh, Shane's doing a video, uh, we'll be putting up on YouTube at some point. So that'd be awesome. Um, and then our second, uh, our second thing would be uh, that's kind of new, we started doing it last race, is a woman, woman to woman uh, conference. And this is really focused on uh, all of the women uh, who are either doing the race, uh, supporting men who are in the race, and um, or just women who are sailing. I mean, if you are a person that's out there sailing and you want to join us, that'd be great. Uh, we talk about the things that women talk about and don't talk about on boats. So um, it's great. It's great kind of coming together. Uh, and I think that was it. Let's do some raffles. Let's do some raffles. All right, what do I have in my bag? start off with a nice dry bag. This is a Mustang Survival is our title sponsor and they give us lots of good stuff. So, a nice dry bag. All right, last three digits would be 280. Anybody? 280? 280? Yeah, that would be me. There you go. Oh. 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 Um, let's see, 
I've got a Mustang hat, survival hat, and a really cool, this is a koozie. It's a Gosling's koozie that says Dan Be Happy. But the cool thing is it has like a little thing in the back where you can put your credit card. You need a koozie, you're not drinking fast enough. All right, uh, 279. So whoever was in front of or behind you. Oh, 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 you might need a koozie. <laughs> We'll do two shirts. We'll do this is an extra extra large and a large. So and they run really small. I am wearing a small one. All right. So we've got and these are Mustang. Really cool. I know each one's kind of different too. So you never know what you're going to get. Uh, two five two. Right here. I told you. Nice. There you go. You Thank got you. some shirts. Thank you. All right. What else do we have in here? Gloves. How about some gloves? Here's some gloves. This is a size medium. These are uh, looks like they're fingerless gloves. Mustang Survival, very nice. This one is two seven one. Great. If you need a different size, I've got different sizes. Okay. Thank you. See me after. Okay. All right. That's what we're gonna do for raffles. So, without further ado, I guess John. Hey, John. Yes. You ready? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, that yeah, was me, John. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? Most women call me. <laughs> Sorry. Is that out loud? Yeah. That's not a tape, is it? <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're at break here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recap a little. Some very good questions during halftime. Thank you very much. And so I'm going to just drop this down. We're going to go to some emails. I emailed myself. There were questions about polars. And I went through my... Ooh, how's this work? This is where we left off, I think. Uh, how come this is not showing on the screen? I know why. Because I didn't go right. Oh. With this thing. Anybody here was not a physical education major? <laughs> Self deprecation I found out was attractive a long time ago. I'm kidding. Uh, you got my screen top now? No, for a second. Yeah. Alright, I think we're good. Yep. Alright. Crap, how do I do this? Maximize the window. Screen. Well, the screenshot from my phone, so that's what you're getting. All right, you, you're going to have to squint because I'm done playing with it. So pretty much here's what you're getting on this is, so you have uh, your wind speed up here on the top, so it's light, medium, heavy, gale. And here's your wind angle. Now, this is an example of what's called crossovers. All right, so who hates getting waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning? What sail should we put on? Anybody yeah. hate that besides me? So you can practice and communicate this way. And here's your sales selections that you would have. Like this one's called Comanche, the M1. M1 is main, M2, M3. So this is your reefing that you're going to be dealing with. And then all your different sail configurations are placed in here. This is based on red would be storm sail and trisails that you would have there in the red. Also depending on configurations that you're dealing with. So your wind angles are on one side. All right, you have your force of wind on this side and then your selection of sails. So for an example, at 90 degrees uh, in, let's say, medium wind at 20, this would be uh, either a Comanche with an M1. That's what you have up there. And probably a third sail on there too. I can't read right now, but that's what you'd be looking at. 
Uh, if you're running IRC, anybody here running IRC? New change of the rules, you can go quad headed now. Don't know if you knew that. So if you race IRC, that's quad headed. Uh, which is different because before you could only do triple headed. At meaning that on your most forward tack uh, of the boat, you can place two sails. So that's the difference in IRC ratings now. Um, so this is what a crossover would look like to help you say, all right, here's our sail configuration, all right, based upon wind speed and based upon our wind angle. So you don't have to get woke, you know, the wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning doesn't have to happen, so your crew can go that way. Um, so that's what that one is. And then the other one somebody had a question on was the other email I just sent to myself from a screenshot. No. Polars. Ah, oh, yeah, polars. Full screen. So the polars are different than the crossovers. All right, the crossovers tells you wind speed and what sail configuration. All right, your polars will tell you your optimal wind speed. Now, if you are using uh, Expedition, you can self-generate your polars. All right, so you can do that, and it'll keep your speeds in the database, so it'll create them and change them over time, your polars. <clears throat> so it does have that ability. Again, this one, you have your true wind speed going up top, and then you have what your boat speed's going to be looking on this way. So this is upwind, and then this is downwind. All right, so for example... <laughs> Uh, a true wind angle at 41 uh, at 41.5 uh, degrees is well, what's what we got? True wind speed is at 11. Holy cow! Is that right? True angle at 41, and then your speed. Ah, uh, your speeds are on the. I don't have it on the seconds. Your speeds will be on the bottom. I don't have those. So on Comanche, at 11, uh, their true wind angle. I think, if I remember right, is something like uh, 18 to 19 uh, miles per hour, or, or, or knots. And so this would have your boat speed, what you'd be looking for. Oh, it does have boat speed right here. There you go. Sorry about boat speed on top right here. So I, when I said 12, that's 14. That was close. Yeah. So that's what tells you what your polars are. Now, there's some devices we're going to go into. And let me go into that now. <coughs> can, I get, can I get back to, to this? There you go. Okay, so now let's talk about some tools that I think might be useful to analyze your data that you're bringing down. Uh, I don't know too many <coughs> navigators these days that are not using an iPad one way or one form or one fashion. Uh, I provide the, I, I, I prefer the mini iPads that you can buy for like 120 bucks used. Uh, those are the ones I highly recommend with, um, with the possibility of putting a data card in because those are the ones that have GPS that work really, really well. Uh, I prefer these. I get two of them because I'm expecting one to break or get thrown over the boat at any time. Uh, but that's why we use this. If you go to any hardware store, you go to any Home Depot, they have this like 40-pound uh, Velcro stuff. It's absolutely fantastic. You build your own straps. You can stick it on the boat. It doesn't go anywhere with that stuff. That Velcro stuff lasts forever, too. It's a great tip. I'll give you. Um, and if you do have to take it off, a little heat gun is off like that. No stain. Um, the reason I use this iPad is to have a great, I have some great applications on here that I can use. One, of course, is uh, Navionics. Very easy to plot courses on there. Very, very easy when you understand how to search uh, lat longs, once you get the Navionics, very easy, specifically in a, an emergency situation, you have somebody given a lat long, it's probably going to be faster to start plotting on an iPad than it's going to be on any of your MFDs. Just, it's just the way it's so useful to deal with. Um, applications I use while racing. So while racing, I'm going to be using sailracer.net. So with sailracer.net, I have the ability to plot like a start line, which is absolutely fantastic. So I can pin my starts 
all right, I can pin the boats and I can, I, and I can do all that, but you can also program in your polars. By programming your polars into this, you can have it set on percentage and you can see what your percentages are while you're racing. So do you need to trim if you're at 100% polar? Well, yeah, because maybe you can get 105% based on trim, depending on what it's going on. But at least you're getting feedback when you start using some tools on how fast you might be going, all right? Or if you're consistently like 90% like of polars, you, you, you know, you might have something dragging under the boat. You don't know, but it helps you make decisions based on your sail configurations. I think this is like $30 per year. It's got a great starting program, but you can also run your data in there. Now, you can also pick up, now I don't care what kind of system that you have, whether it's a Ray Marine, all right, whether it's a Garmin, whether it's a, a um, BG, uh, you can also pick up your boat data on this with the different applications that they have, which is also important. If you're lucky enough to have a Garmin Captain watch, you can run your autopilot <laughs> from your watch. You can change the stations. There's a lot of great applications that you can do. Um, uh, the other advantage is if you have a couple of different softwares, so I've talked about I've got a Pro is also on here, which it does a very similar thing, all right, for a great starting application program. Uh, uh, is iRegatta Pro. iRegatta Pro is about the same price. It does the exact same thing. It's a more user friendly when it comes to starting uh, than, than, than the other one. So every other boat that I've been racing on that's really competitive uh, has the ability to take the data from its main download link system. All right? So you're going to have a main system on your boat that's downloading your data, usually going into a laptop. All right? I highly recommend getting the tough book because the manufacturer says get a tough book because it's tough and it's made for rating it when in the water. I use this edge, but I have to put in an external GPS on there. All right, that's a Garmin external GPS and it works fine. Um, but splash top, splash top is something for your navigators and, and, and your, your boat owners uh, uh, you should really pay attention to. By putting splash top on, on my screen here, when I'm using Expedition or any other program, I link up now to the same Wi-Fi system with my iPad, and the screen I have on my computer, I can control from this laptop, or from the iPad. So whether it's Expedition, I could run Expedition from the top of the boat utilizing <coughs> this, utilizing your iPad. Splash top gives you that ability to do that. You want to do email, it does the exact same thing. I forgot my passcode. What's my passcode? One, two, three, four, five, six. See how that works, everybody? <laughs> everybody knows my passcode, all right? <laughs> this is the way it should work on your boat. There's a lot of cool things you can do on this uh, with, the, with, with the used mini iPad. I got all kinds of apps on there. Um, one of the most important ones I do have, all right, here's my own plug because we do have the offshore medical coming up in April. The first aid application, all right, from uh, the Red Cross. Anything medical that happens, you can put on here, all right. So you just click on it, like it says, emergency prepare, hospital quizzes. You can do all kinds of stuff on here. So if it's broken bones, you click on broken bones. It tells you what to do. Bleeding, what to do. Head injury, what to do. Seizure, what to do. It's all on there. All, all on there for all your medical could be on this. It's a great application. I highly recommend it. Again, one yacht, one device for the yacht everything on there, the crew knows how to use it, train that. An another way to deal with this, now again, no matter what kind of device you have. Now, Ray Marine are often closed. If it's an older Ray Marine system, you're going to have trouble getting Wi-Fi on it. Usually that's the case, right? But it's been hacked. Uh, there's three ways to get it. A Raspberry Pi works great. Uh, takes your data from the boat and puts it into devices you can read externally, no matter if your system's closed or not. The DMK box is another one. It plugs into whatever system you have and turns it into Wi-Fi. And the other one is going to be, which I recommend, is the Yacht Devices. <coughs> Yacht Devices has a NEMA 2000 Wi-Fi gateway. So that takes all your boat data, your wind speed, your boat speed, your engine temperature, all right, and throws it into a Wi-Fi. You download the right applications, and you can see all of that no matter where you are. Why I like it. As we know, the ocean's a wet environment. Everything on your boat is broken. 
It just hasn't told you yet. And if it's going to happen, it's going to happen out there, right? <laughs> so the other nice thing about having the iPads is if you do lose a device which is important, no matter what it is, you have the ability to throw whatever the information is right back into this, and it's a redundancy, so it's a backup. That's what's really nice about having these programs that are out there. And then again, I don't care what you have, turn off your updates. Because the updates will happen when they shouldn't, when you need it. Um, on this, you can see the winner of this year, Sydney Hobart. Last year, you saw the large array. That's gone. And now you can see exactly what they have here with, with the nautical Starlink. These are both John Buoys for Man Overboards. Uh, this is one of their life rafts. That might be enough. I think they got two on there. I think you have 19 to 20 people on that boat. And there's the other one. I got three of them. I got one, two, three. One large, two smalls. And this is how that Diva Gateway works. It doesn't make a difference what you have. It gives you this backup, and this is what it would look like on your iPad. <laughs> Again, this is, not, this is not something that you put on your vessel the day before. This is something you start practicing with all your training now. I mean, the time to make a decision, honestly, the time to re really start making the decision when it comes to um, uh, uh, what to put on your boat is, is, is last week. Really, because the implementation process, the learning process, the getting the crew to understand it, all right, you're behind that deadline right now. If you're using Expedition, the time to start getting training is now. If you need training for Expedition, let me know. Jonesy can put a class together for A to, a to B. I think he does it for 175 or 200 bucks a person. If we do an AT, you know, if we do an Annapolis to Bermuda, we'll get Jonesy to do one over at Annapolis Electronics. Get them, Jonathan, and they just take you step by step how to use expedition that, that that's an easy fix for everyone and it's better to have people know how to do that you know than, than self-discovery maybe and some people might be geniuses in here uh, but you don't here's what's great for expedition you don't need to be a genius you just have to understand how it thinks um, again you got AIS if you lose if you lose your only indicator of ASS in a display you, you have the ability to put it also uh, on your laptops or whatever you're using uh, on your iPads. But I really think the splash top and the Gateway 2000 are very, very important to have. John, is the Gateway different than the, the Predict Win Data Hub? Or is that just a very similar device? Um, Because that Data Hub does some... It, it is the right same right. as the Predict Wind Data Hub. It's doing the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, so, so just assume when you have Expedition you can Predict Wind, you have that too. But yeah, it does the same thing. Absolutely right. But I, I shouldn't have assumed. Uh, that's how you get a, hair, a hold of Eric. Uh, Eric, Eric. Eric is the guy uh, to talk to. He is the only one in the industry that talks satellite phones who is a sailor and if you know anything about myself I only do business with people who are sailors even if it's more expensive I'm still supporting a sailor um, they understand our, my language at least I think it's important to have a device these days when it comes to safety to be able to speak in redundancy over WhatsApp. If you're not familiar with groups of WhatsApp, I think it's important for you to start communicating to your teams on WhatsApp. You know, I have a former life before I, I started doing a lot more racing uh, alone uh, as a, a security professional in the risk management business with the United Nations. And, and there was a time, I think 20 years ago, that everybody uh, for risk management would put together all their people in a country and have what's called the telephone tree. You call this guy, who calls this guy, they never worked. <laughs> Uh, that's all WhatsApp now. WhatsApp groups are important. <coughs> I think it's a great way to communicate. Uh, it's a great way to communicate uh, uh, through your devices because it's low bandwidth. You're not going to use a lot of bandwidth to do that. And it works really, really well. So when it comes down to building your data and your communication plan, 
it's important to build redundancy into that plan. All right. You're going to have your primary method of, uh, of communications, and then what's your emergency method of communications? And always remember, flares are also a way to communicate, but that's uh, smoke signals, that kind of stuff. Question? Yeah. Um, man so, overboard. Man overboard. Okay. All right. One of the requirements, I talk about man overboard and um, PLBs. Are PLBs mandatory for this race? No? I don't think so. I, I think only uh, e perps, but PLBs aren't. Okay, PLBs. All right. From a safety background, um, uh, I know it might be overkill. I want to tell you how I did it, and I understand not everybody has the means and the resources, but there are some cool things that you can do for MOB situations. Um, most of the pro race boats that I consult, teach, coach, and even race on. Uh, we have smoke always in the back of the cockpit, in a little canister of, of smoke. Day or night, if we have an MOB situation, we are trained to drop smoke as well. Easy identifier, a lot of other boats can see it, all right? Uh, smoke is a great tool, day or night, that you might be able to find. The only time it wouldn't work is night with cloud cover and no moon, because you can't see anything with cloud cover and no moon anyway. Uh, if you do have a spotlight, you would be able to see it with a spotlight, though. So you have that, and a spotlight is a reg, so you should have that anyway. Uh, so that's an MOB tip. Uh, you have to train at least once a year to an MOB. That's part of the regs, an offshore regs. I want your training not to see, okay, well, I, all right, so in the safety at sea courses, I teach when it comes to safety for MOBs. Uh, safety training, and, and you're going to see U.S. sailing's language changing on this, uh, doesn't include just like uh, driving exercise. There's three phases to an MOB, all right? The first phase is going to be boat maneuverability, which is probably what most of us only, only, only do is a boat maneuverability exercise. The second phase of an MOB is going to be attaching the person with, well, to a line, the person that's in the water, to a line and to the boat. So attaching that person to the vessel is the second phase. Now the third phase is the most difficult. It's getting a person or and an incapacitated person out of the water. That is what an MOB training should look like. All right. You should have the ability in different sea states, in different wind states, in order to be able to pull people out of the water like that. It is the most difficult thing you may ever do in your entire life. And one of the reasons is, if you think of the center of gravity of a person who is now 100 pounds heavier, and your center of gravity is high, to pull people out by hand. All right? so, so pay attention uh, to the information, the resources that are out there on pulling people out of the water. It's the most critical aspect of your safety training, is having a plan on how to get people out of the water, specifically when they cannot get themselves out. That's what's gonna be really important, where they cannot help themselves, <clears throat> all right? Um, so so that's, that, that, that's very critical as well. Um, so the PLBs, if you have them, the ones with AIS, make sure that they are connected properly before you leave, all right? specifically the AIS, to your systems. Otherwise, they won't go off. Just having the, ASA, uh, the AIS uh, uh, PLBs on is not going to help you if it's not configured to your chart plotter. So make sure that you have the right numbers in there so they go off, so they can identify who you are and where you are. Um, a list of those can be provided in your radio. All right? If Expedition, you can put those in Expedition as well. All right? So that's going to be really important. Uh, specifically your telephone numbers, which is on the ASS. Remember, remember you have a telephone number that runs for each and every device. It's not a telephone number, but that's the best way to talk about the digital select calling features that they have. Another thing, for $99 on Defender, you, you can get handheld, basic, waterproof radios, two of them, for $99. Um, the rules for my teams are, uh, if we're reefed, got PFDs on and you're clipped in. Doors are shut. At night, doors are shut, you're clipped in, and you, and, and you got your, your vests on. Those are our rules, no matter what. That's what happens. Make that a habit in your training. Additionally, everybody has a radio. If I got a person in the water, I want to be able to talk to that person, or that person has to be able to communicate. Right. I think that's important as well. But not only in your MOB training do I want you to think about the data 
and how you deal with that. Pardon me. Uh, not only think about transferring data from the water, but as part of your MOB training, you have to train people how to be in the water and what to do when they're in the water. All right. God forbid you don't have that situation. The best way to prevent that situation, of course, is being clipped in. But pay attention to your clip points. For the people that are at the stern of the vessel, usually in a driving position or a coaching position or a strategist position, <clears throat> you don't want to clip in behind you. You want to clip in forward. The full extent of your tether should keep you on the boat, not attached to the boat. All right. <coughs> Trick we learned recently, the double tethers are fantastic because I, I learned this from a kid kid was playing on a boat, had all his dad's gear on, and he's running up and down the boat, clipped into a tether on one side and clipped into a tether on the other side. I just went, holy cow, how come I never thought of that? <laughs> Brilliant! Because you're always going to be on the high side. It's always going to keep you on the boat. Uh, but if at all possible, have your tethers running in and out. Um, you can utilize AIS with a handheld and practice with that to make sure that it works. It's easy to have an AIS DSC alert. All right, if you accidentally flip that up on your emergency distress calls, the new protocols are turn them off and then call the Coast Guard. Accident or training, no problem. All right, turn it off first, then you call the Coast Guard. So you can train, you can deal with DSCs. There's a protocol on how to do that. Um, that's MOBs. Any other questions I planted in the crowd, anyone? All right, what else do I have here? All right, power data power management. Um, again, technology is always changing, correct? Uh, these bricks with power are fantastic. I don't go on any boat without this because everyone's looking for a cell phone charge, right? Absolutely right. So it's a great way to deal with it. My other recommendation is buy the ones that you can start cars with. All right because they last a lot longer and if you do need to jump a motor you might be able to jump it depending on the engine that you have with a battery all right so I always had two or three of these on my vessel for power management in case there was an emergency I always have a backup power correct so again if you're gonna have an MOB bag what goes in your MOB bag to manage your data and communicate backup one of these would be great or two of these and then make sure they're in the right bags so these are also a way, because if you're going to be in the water, you're going to be wanting to be with some way to have extended ways to communicate and charge devices. I think this is a really key element to have in your ditch bags <coughs> for data. Um, so that's what I'm at now. Now it's Q&A time. I can field any question you'd like. If you want me to run over anything I was not clear about, I'd be happy to run over that. I have lots of uh, other examples of crossovers, or we could talk about polars, or setting up polars, or uh, anything else you want. Um, I'll tell you now that we do have a, who doesn't have a YouTube channel? <laughs> I have a YouTube channel. Uh, we have some cool stuff on there, it's all dedicated to safety. Uh, last month, Pete Carrico, one of the coaches from the Naval Academy, who's retiring this week, and I did... Um, a two-part series on the key performance indicators of watch captains. Pete and I talk about different stories that we've had over the years, but that's a really great one. So your watch captains, you could really start setting what your expectations are for them. Um, yesterday we did one called the Sailor's Debrief, where we go through uh, uh, an incident which happened uh, almost 10 years ago where suddenly in the Mediterranean they found 80 knots of wind. <laughs> suddenly, right? <laughs> Uh, so, so that's important uh, to, to watch because we analyze every mistake and some of the things they did well, but it's a great learning. So everything we're trying to do is to provide information of things going wrong to help sailors learn from others. Um, my grandfather used to tell me that there's nothing wrong with reinventing the wheel. Just make sure it's not square when you do it. All right, so do it the right way. Steal from anybody as much as you possibly can. Um, uh, so we have that. Ministry of Sailing comes up number one in any Google search, any search that you have. Our email's on there, sale at ministryofsailing.com. We come up number one whenever you search, so, so we're there for you if you have any questions. Again, we have, a, we have um, our basic safety training coming up in April, which is also going to include, it's an advanced 
uh, life saving that provides the U.S. sailing and world sailing uh, life saving certificate. All right, so some races require uh, an advanced medical certificate. That'd be the FASNA, that'd be the Transatlantic, uh, uh, the Bermuda Newport. Uh, so we can provide that for you. Um, we also, innovative, we try to stay cutting edge. We're, we're the authors of the Sailing Rescue Swimmer Certification. So you've seen some boats on the, uh, on the presentation here that are pretty high performance, you know, pretty turbo boats kicked up. Almost every single one that you saw has a certified uh, uh, Ministry of Sailing uh, sailing rescue swimmer on them. All right, this uh, uh, we've done this because some recommendations after post incidents have come out to have like rescue swimmers like the pros. And so what we've done is we've harnessed some military experts, some Coast Guard experts, some Air Force guys, Royal Marines, <coughs> people who do this for a living. And we've come up with a, a, a methodology, uh, uh, procedures, uh, and a certification on how you would do that. It is not for every boat. All right, it's usually for higher performance boats, like we would say boats that might be going so fast that it might be 13 miles to turn around to get the boat under control to come back and, 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 and find a person. What's interesting is there are incidents of boats going so fast it took them 13 miles to turn around to gain control of the boat. Uh, remember, uh, IRC allows four head sails now. Anybody want to do a quick stop doing 30 knots with four head sails? Your rig's going to be coming down every single time. So how do you depower the boat, get the boat under control to turn around and come back, right? So you're gonna have some distance there. This program, uh, uh, if you have a boat which kind of meets the category, we do an assessment to see if you're gonna have that type. It can be that way, but also remember, it's also for the person who's incapacitated or the sea state is such that you just can't get to the person close enough. Uh, so we have that coming up uh, in May, which is right before the race. Uh, uh, the prices are changing on the website, so just pay attention to that uh, for the certification for the rescue swimmer. Um, there's three things in order to utilize uh, the importance of, of a safety rescue swimmer or a sailing rescue swimmer. Uh, first of all, you have to train rescue swimmer, a certification. Second thing is the right personal protection equipment. And the third thing uh, is going to be, of course, a trained crew. All right, uh, so that's what we deal with. Um, uh, so those are our three things, elements that we provide. Uh, it's really cutting edge. Um, uh, so we're happy to be partnered with um, another life-saving organization. It's not Mustang. <laughs> Want to? <laughs> they just wouldn't answer emails. Um, so, uh, so now I'm open now for any question, sailing, anything, data, things I've glossed over I can dive into for you. I have all the time in the world so don't worry about my time. Uh, yes, sir. How do we get copies of your presentation? The copies of the presentation? Uh, the recording will be, I guess I could, can I put the PowerPoint on the website? You're more than welcome to put it on the website or just okay. email me and I'll splash to you. Okay. All right. I'll That's sale at ministryofsailing.com, of course. And we'll have the link to the YouTube video on the website. I don't think you have to bleep anything out, do you? It's that one. One, one thing? Yeah. I know nothing. All right. Any other questions? There's no stupid question. I'm the, I'm the idiot here. I've made all the mistakes. I'll continue to make them. Yes, where sir. Do we, where do we find the boat pullers, or how do we calculate? The... So, who's your sail maker? The, the, um, Doyle. Doyle? Yeah. So, if you would ask them, I think they can have it, but go back to, what kind of boat do you have? Cow. Cal 39? Oh, yeah, just go on the internet. Yeah. Cal 39. That should be on there. I'm almost positive, yeah. If you go to your Cal website, do you have a Cal owners group or anything like that you're involved with? Yeah. Well, first I'd look for the, 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 the users group, but yeah, Cal 39 should absolutely have it. Well, it's like a later of Cal 39. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you can find it. As a matter of fact, if you look probably <coughs> in the trans pack, I think of Cal 39 did one last year. Um, so, so what rain system are you using with your boat? Are you going IRC, PERF? ORC. <coughs> ORC? Uh, I don't know. I don't know that. All right, so you're not rated yet. So you don't know yeah. what class you're going to be in? Yeah. All right. So uh, ORC, I think it's an option. I don't know. It is. Uh, it's an option. They, they had a one-time thing a couple of years ago. But they'll give you your pullers for the sale inventory that you entered in your certificate. Yeah. Um, if you were doing CRCA, 
O R R E Z. There's an extra fee. They can give you pollers for the sale inventory mm -hmm. that you have. If you're doing perk, you gotta go um, elsewhere. They they don't do pollers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I could spend like five minutes and probably pull them on on the internet right now to start looking for it's, your. Book. I tell you, yeah. it's almost. It's worth it to go. Uh, it's RC. almost worth it to get a ORREZ or ORC certificate in order to get pollers. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely say it's worth and, it. And a, and a small additional fee. Well, and time. Have I, I I I think it's important. Not only is it worth it, you know, time is money, right? I, I think every 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 cent you spent on your boat has returns by the more time you spend on your boat. And your learning curve is going to be expressed amazingly by having your polars and starting to know what your trim characteristics are looking like. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, any other, any, anyone else? Anything? I'm local for the time being, so if you need anything, I'm here. If I'm not, I got somebody answering the phone somewhere. Quick. Yes, you, you had a, a device on there that's called a red pour or yep. something like yep. that, which manages the type of data. It's an optimizer. Really yep, yeah. the optimizer, the red port optimizer. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so that would go into either your handhelds, the, those devices that don't have a Wi Fi. So that would be on the 9595 handheld Iridium. That would be. Um, uh, uh, anything that doesn't have a built-in Wi-Fi, that has the ability to help you do that. Okay. All right, so that would take your handheld and do that. I use it on, heck, I have it on my boat always as a backup anyway, because I always have a backup handheld. So I always have one of that, one, one of those going into the Wi-Fi system of the boat. And anything will plug into that too. So you, you I mean, it's got a USB, right? So, so that works out really cool that way. So it takes your data, any data you put in there would turn that into a Wi-Fi signal. And you could also, and you can control the type of data. That's exactly <coughs> right. And then you control turn everything on and off. So if you got Starlink or something, you Absolutely. plug it into that. And if you got Starlink, you don't care, right? <laughs> <laughs> can you control the data with Star? Yeah, Starlink you can, but but oh, okay. but I mean, that is data. Well, I guess. It's monthly, it's monthly for them. I don't think they have a package other than monthly. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's a great question. Thanks for asking that. <coughs> Anyone else? So you so you think that that rig right there that you that you were using uh, the executive uh, that that's a pretty good value that, that that's what you commonly use? I'll tell you, I started using this this year, and I've been very pleased with it. I think the price point is right. Um, if you you know like anything, you know you're going to see these prices starting going down soon. Um, I found it very user user friendly. When it comes to user friendliness, user experience, top of the notch. Out of the box, you'll have this up, seriously, if it's charged, you will have this up and running out of the box in 10 minutes. I don't know how many other devices that have that much accuracy, that much speed, that fast. The user experience on this is absolutely fantastic. And the options, having your own ISP, meaning you don't have to go through Xscape. You don't have to buy another computer program to learn that program. Get another email address. All right, to use those things to pull it on, it really is an advantage to, to, to deal with those. I think I think it's a great advantage. Those are the advantages that I see. Download as you're carrying, you know. Did you share the price with that? I don't know if you saw that. Um, this should be under 2K, under $2,000. Right around there. And how much does a day cost? You'd be, depending on your data package, or between 150 to 250 bucks a month. I, I think I think things that would be, and, and then they vary. All right, what season is this? In location, seasonal and locational. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's 12 volt powered though, right? I mean, it's got its own battery, but are you yeah. are you charging it with a USB? Yeah, I'm charging with USB. So if you, I, I yeah, right in here, it's a USB. I don't know. Somebody tell me what number that is. It's the newer ones. USB C. Oh, or uh, three. A B C. Three. C. <laughs> Yeah, which is which is super nice. Um, which makes look, it, in my opinion, slightly an advantage over Starlink is that I don't have to power it on 110 or have a inverter. Or there you go. It's got three charges just from this. So, so you know, the, in case your batteries go down on your boat, here's your backup plan, right? 
or your alternator breaks, because your alternator is going to break, right? Because it only breaks when you go <laughs> offshore. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> it's the only time where you, only time you lose your alternator is when you go offshore. Doesn't it? Other than that, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, mind you, even although I told you I'll test everything beforehand, when you get out, there's still going to break. That's why I, I trust redundancy. Um, <coughs> any other questions? You didn't mention the, the Garmin, uh, like the handheld. Okay, so the so, so so you can have the Garmin. All right, those those are really just like kind of two-way communicators for text only. They don't have voice in them. They work absolutely fantastic. You can't pull weather down from them. They're they're like communicators. All right, so it's like point-to-point -point text communications. Also understand that if you're using um, secondary devices, the in reaches, the Garmin's, uh, the, the hockey pucks that do, do stuff. In case there is an emergency, remember that you're going through a third party. Whereas if it's a PLB or you're going through with the EPIRB, once those go off, it goes through a central command center and then identifies a distress signal. All right, and then it goes right to the local agency responsible for responding that globally. All right, so wherever you are, the, there is a grid system on who responds to what ocean or to what location. So that goes directly into the, in, in, into the central command system where the in-reach and the Garmin's, they go through a third party, which then goes to, yeah, and I believe Garmin took over in-reach, so I think the call center is the same now. So that's, those are the differences on that. So understand that as part of your, your communication, emergency communication plan. Um, I mean, just recently, the YouTube we put up last night was pretty funny because the guy says, pan, 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 pan. That's all he said. <laughs> Reminds me of my grandmother when, I, she first had a, when she first had a CB radio. You know, I think we were driving to a, a football game you know, on the other side of the country. Um, I remember my grandmother had a CB, and she's like, there's a dog in the road. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. That's my grandmother, everybody. Like that. Where? <laughs> uh, so as part of your training, uh, I think it's important that each and every person on your boat has to understand how to communicate in an emergency. You should train on that. Um, uh, we, we provide a lot of opportunities to deliver uh, 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 race boats. You know, a lot of different places are taking two races or come back from races. And a lot of times people will pay to get on our crew to get some, you know, some training, uh, which is great. We love that because, you know, I love the opportunity to teach people safety at sea on the water. And when we get people who are intimidated uh, by speaking on a radio, we'll put in a radio call sign rule where everybody gets a call sign. And the only way you can talk on that trip is by hailing another person <laughs> and, 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 and practicing it. <laughs> and so if you want to talk to someone, we'll put on the rule that you have to hail that person. So as part of your training, this is a good way to deal with people on how to communicate in an emergency. And play hardball. Send your Coast Guard. That's always fun. Any other, any other questions? You got me all day long if you want. All right, Kareem. Any more prizes to give away? Uh, you know what? I actually I happen to have two tickets in my hand. Oh! <laughs> um, all right. How about let's make it good? Nobody ever says no. 